Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO. Tarek, I got a fun and exciting episode for you guys this evening because we're going to be going over the Dolphin Emulator, more specifically yesterday's release, number 2506. It does a whole new host of things as far as we and GameCube emulation are concerned, fixing up some issues in audio stuttering, fixing up some issues in frame timing, and giving us a bunch of new features that are going to go a long way for we and GameCube emulation. And considering Dolphin is already the de facto best way to emulate these two platforms and does a spectacular job, getting even more improvements is always going to be a fun time. So in the video, I'm going to go over what has changed, how that's going to benefit you, and basically why you want to upgrade your Dolphin installation today. Before you get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It definitely helps us out. If you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But Dolphin is an absolutely outstanding emulator that I use on the channel all the time. While I may own an original GameCube and Wii, if I'm going to capture footage, it's usually going to be on Dolphin, just because I get the enhancements and other eases of use. So we're just taking a look at Sonic Colors right now as far as the gameplay footage is concerned. But as far as this new update for Dolphin, you're going to get three fundamentally large improvements as far as feature sets are concerned. You're also going to get a bunch of smaller things. First one is going to be the frame pacing. Second one is going to be any sort of stutter in the audio. And the third one is going to be anisotropic filtering, which is now enabled within emulation. Apparently that was something that was not actually yet working in Dolphin, at least according to their notes. But I'm going to go over each and every one of these actual use cases specifically and kind of talk about how it's going to improve and why it is a huge deal for Dolphin. And you'll see here they do an entire progress report on 2506. So if you want to get more in depth on this, I will leave a link in the description below so you can read each and every entry so you better understand what's going on. But again, this is a very fundamental improvement for Dolphin emulation. These are major changes in how the emulator actually works and how it's going to work in the future. So this is basically day one stuff of all this new feature set and that is awesome. The frame pacing improvements probably are my favorite, but the audio and anisotropic filtering are also huge as well. But let's kind of touch on the frame pacing just to start to explain what I'm talking about here. And I will get into this deeper once we get into this section of the progress notes on the Dolphin website, but I want you to understand one thing. If we take a look at the bottom right hand side of the screen, you're going to see two lines, a blue one and an orange one. The orange one is the overall frame rate and the blue one is the V blank line. That's basically how the frames are being generated and displayed to you. That is a line that we want to keep consistent or else you're going to see some jumping around in the image. Maybe you don't exactly notice it every single time, but it is something you will see. And that's where there's going to be a lot of improvements in this version of Dolphin. We'll get into a little bit deeper but I want you to understand the difference between the two because they are important but one of the biggest things and something I have seen in captures before and should be fixed up now is some of the audio hitching you would end up in a situation where the audio would hitch or stutter almost felt like it was either repeating a note or otherwise just kind of blanking out for just a moment in time and audio way more than video is something that people notice when it isn't working it's one of those things our ears are just so good at actually detecting bad audio so they basically went in and rewrote a lot of how the audio buffer works for Dolphin, so now you shouldn't be having any of that hitching, which obviously is going to be a great segue to the first sound sample of this video. It's going to be Sonic Colors because the soundtrack is great, and I'll be right back with more. Sounds good to my ear, but you leave me a comment down below and you tell me what you think. And just so you know, none of these things are going to be 100% foolproof. This does not mean you might not have an audio hitch here and there, depending especially on what sort of hardware you actually bring along for the ride for emulation and how many enhancements you use. But let's get back into that frame pacing situation because I know that's going to be one that a lot of people are very curious about. And they even give you some examples there of the overall frame and V blank timings in milliseconds. 16.7 is usually 16.66. That is going to be for 160 of a second anything below 16.66 and you don't have any lag frames it gets into a lot more timings and stuff like that but this is super important not just for fun games like super mario sunshine which i'll show in just a moment but also games like soul Calibur 2 because you want 
your frame pacing consistent, especially if the control inputs require some sort of timing on a frame window. Fighting games are one of the best examples of that. You're going to have so many frames to actually be able to input a command that is the frame window. So if you end up in a situation where you have uneven frame time, you can actually suffer in the controls. And just because something is running at the proper frame rate doesn't mean it'll always be running at the proper frame timing. It is one of those strange things that kind of separates itself out into two distinct numbers. And if that doesn't make sense, I'll try to leave a link in the description below if I remember to an article about how these two things work. But you'll see here they start talking about the overall frame timings and the V-blank. So a lot of work has gone into the back end to try to get a smoother experience out of Dolphin. Now do remember that a lot of times this emulator will still hitch every once in a while. Seems like it's caching something in the background. It's one of those things, the more you play, the better the game is going to be. But you'll see here it initially talks about Super Mario Sunshine that it had some strange behavior going on that apparently has been fixed up so obviously that's the next thing we're going to take a look at because in my opinion i know not many people agree this is my favorite 3d mario platformer of all time believe me comment down below and you tell me which one is your favorite and this is a situation there's so many fun ways to play super mario sunshine and even super mario eclipse the new fan game within the sunshine world which i did a video on last year but dolphin is definitely my preferred way to play super mario sunshine because it gives me so many enhancements to the graphics giving me a presentation and overall visual style for sunshine that absolutely nothing else can match and even though i don't have the frame timing on right now it does feel like slightly smoother of an experience but just so you know on the spec front i'm running an i9 12900k and a 3080 ti with 64 gigabytes of ram so i definitely have a lot of brute force to send against something like this and that is always the fun part i would still say that you can get frame drops this is not going to be perfection and the dolphin devs aren't promising perfection they're just talking about improvements and how dolphin runs and because this emulator already is so incredible getting new improvements really shows the dedication from the team to make this the de facto best way to play GameCube and Wii games. I would already consider that to be the best case scenario. Use Dolphin and you'll have the best time, but it's nice to see that they're still looking in under the engine and kind of trying to figure out how they can make things even better for everyone. I love that. This emulator has been around for so long and it keeps getting improvements, but this month definitely seems to just be a metric crap ton of amazing new features. That's definitely why I wanted to talk about it. But let's go from something 3D to into 2D because obviously, while 3D was definitely the GameCube strong suit. We had a ton of good 2D games as well, and those will definitely see improvements in the resolution and also in some of the frame pacing. So let's take a look at Miramasa the Demon Blade, one of the prettiest 2D games ever made, not just on Wii, but on any console ever to exist. And if you notice a slight stuttering here when you hit the enemies, that is within the game in and of itself. It's kind of an effect more so than it is any sort of stuttering in the emulator. And it's going to be our second sound sample as well. So go ahead, listen for 35 seconds, hear that crystal clear audio, and I'll come back and talk about more of that frame pacing and why it is just so amazing. <laughs> looks great, sounds great, and it has a really nice green cadence as well. Well, leave me a comment down below and tell me, have you noticed any hitching or stuttering on your Dolphin installation, whether in the audio or the video? It definitely is dependent on how many enhancements you try to put on the emulation and how high you try to dial up the frame rate, because even on my system, trying to do something like Super Mario Sunshine, anything above 4K is going to cause some hitching even on this new version. It's one of those things that requires a lot of horsepower, and even though I have a lot, it still seems to like to do it. Now, the anisotropic filtering, you're going to see is enabled as well. On the left and on the right, you're going to see the difference there. Now, apparently, and I wasn't aware of this, it's a very expensive feature as far as performance is concerned to run on actual hardware, so it wasn't really used all that much, but you're going to get it. Additionally, some games are now going to allow you to run them over something like 60 frames per second. The list is very limited, and I will leave the link to the Dolphin Progress Report below where they talk about it, but they do give a good instance here in Super Mario Strikers just how much clearer that ball movement is in 100 120 hertz versus 60 hertz so don't expect every game to do this expect it to be limited but it is going to be awesome all the same but that really is the overall takeaway from this new version of dolphin you're going to get improved frame pacing so you should have a lot less judder in your image which is going to be super important not just for fighting games but for the visual presentation in and of itself because i even notice this sometimes on captures i will have just a frame that feels like it repeats or kind of likes to skip around a little bit obviously you're going to get those sound improvements we 
talked about as well, so you should have a lot less to zero actual stutters in the sound. Combine that with some new filtering, the ability to run some games above 60 frames per second, and the other under the hood improvements, and you have what probably feels like one of the most fundamental Dolphin upgrades in a few years now. So definitely go ahead, update your Dolphin installation, and have fun with it. Short of that, I'm done, and I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye-bye.